Welcome back to Comic Storian, where we break down the lore of your favorite video games, comic books, and movies, and we turn them into audio dramas, allowing you to keep up with your favorite elements and understand what is going on in your busy life. Recently, we've been covering a lot of the Teen Titans, and inside of the Teen Titans storylines is a character known as Crush, one who many believe to be the daughter of Lobo. Well, the Teen Titans comic book went ahead and gave us an official origin for the Crush character. And today we're going to be covering that for you. Now with the Teen Titans finally catching a break from fighting crime, it's time for Crush to do a little investigative work herself. As Jin follows Crush into the warehouse, she says that she doesn't understand what they're doing here. Why would he have anything to hide? We're a team now. Crush tells her, you don't spend that much time with a guy who dresses like a bat and lives in a cave and not have something to hide. She pushes a large box aside, revealing a metal door, and she tells Jin, see? Jin tells her, maybe we should ask Robin to. But before she can finish, Crush asks, where's the fun in that? And she kicks in the door. The two look in and Crush tells her, see? All of these cool toys for us to play with. Come on, let's take a ride out on town. Jin asks, shouldn't we ask for permission? And Crush laughs. <laughs> Never. Jin sits in the back of the motorcycle as Crush revs the engine as she slams through a wall shouting, let's roll. As the two go out onto the city, Jin asks where they're going and Crush tells her upstate. She lost something a long time ago and it's time for her to get it back. Jin holds on tight and Crush thinks to herself that all she has to do is go to the coordinates that Robin gave her. The one thing that she didn't mention to Jin though is that when they get there, someone's going to die. The two make a stop at a rest station and Crush says that they need to beef up before going any further. They head into the diner and the waitress asks if there's anything that she can get for them. Jin says that she would like a bola lala. And the waitress asks, a what? It's one part to golem saliva mixed with. The Crush speaks over her telling her, yeah, she'll just have a water. As the waitress leaves, Crush looks around stating, a genie and an alien walk into a diner and nobody even bats an eye. She looks out the window to notice that her reflection has changed, and Jin says that she thought it would be best to cast a spell to make them fit in. Crush shouts, what the hell is this? We look like prostitutes! Jin tells her that she drew inspiration from the girls on the show that Red Arrow watches when she thinks no one is around. Keeping up with the Kardashians? Crush yells in frustration, telling her to turn them back, and Jin asks what about the people around them. So Crush yells, who cares? Neither of us should care! We are what we are. The world can deal with it, or get out of our way. Jin says that she's trying to help and Crush tells her, It's okay. I stopped giving a crap what people think a long time ago. It all started 15 years ago when I crash landed on Earth in the middle of a group of weirdos trying to figure out the truth of the universe. But these weirdos, they accepted each other for who they were and danced around a giant burning figure. David and Lisa Rojos, her Earth parents. They were taking a spiritual journey together when she literally fell out of the sky. They didn't have much, but they were enlightened. They really understood the world for what it was. Instead of worrying about themselves, they came to her rescue. A chain was surrounding her, but Lisa didn't care and picked her up. But back in our real world, not in our story, there's a crash as the waitress returns and drops their drinks on the floor. She backs up stating that they aren't looking for any trouble and Jin tries to explain, but Crush gets up stating they won't understand. All they see are a couple of freaks. So she takes Jin by the hand, knocking the door off its hinges. And Jin quickly repairs it, stating that they can't just break everything. A short ways down the street, Crush beats on an apple tree for the two of them to eat, and Jin asks what happened next in her story. So Crush takes a bite, telling her, Well, my Earth parents weren't perfect, but I always felt loved. David and Lisa weren't just her parents, though. They were her best friends. Aside from her chain, oh bless. David would always let her play princess, but one day after she saw her reflection in the mirror, she asked why she didn't look like them. David told her it's because she was special and that her birth parents are superheroes. She asked, like Superman? And they told her, exactly like Superman. And your parents must be off saving the universe. It was at that moment that she wanted to stop being a princess and be a superhero. But because of David and Lisa's addictions, they really couldn't stay in one place long. They had a hard time keeping jobs and paying bills, and, and they even made enemies out of most people. Their habits were something that they could never really lick, but it didn't matter. They were family, and she loved them. After laying low in Nevada, she went out to get some food when she saw someone on the TV that looked just like her. The problem was the man that she saw, well, he was fighting Superman. The people watching the display talked about how Superman wouldn't lose, and that he would finally get rid of Lobo, who was the last of his kind. So Crush ran home and she shouted to David and Lisa that they lied to her, that her father was actually an intergalactic villain. David told her that just because Lobo was bad doesn't mean that she has to be, and that she could choose to be the kind of person that she wanted to be. 
Crush tried to say something, but instead of listening, she told David and Lisa and even Obless to leave her alone before storming out. What was she supposed to think? She just found out that she wasn't the daughter of a superhero, but instead her dad was a real dirtbag murderer. When she left, she didn't even bother to cover up or try to hide herself. And that's when the truckers spotted her. They called her names and threw rocks at her. David and Lisa always protected her, so she didn't even know how to respond. Instead of walking away, nature kicked in big time. She took out the truckers and then returned home, but it was too late. Somebody had already gotten to their trailer and killed them. Killed David and Lisa. And oh bless, well, her chain was gone. So before the cops came, she ran. And here they are today. Jin says that she's sorry to hear about her great tragedy, but it doesn't mean the world is all bad. Yeah, there are things in the world that can hurt you, but if you focus on the bad, you won't see the good. Crush laughs. Okay, fine. What's your story? Change my mind. Jin pauses for a moment and tells her, perhaps one day she will share it. Crush puts her arm on Jin's shoulder, telling her, sure, no rush. Now, let's go get Obless. Later in upstate New York, Crush bursts open a door of a mansion yelling, knock, knock, anybody home? A man in the shadows begins to laugh, stating, well, looky here, I know who you are. Kinda hard to forget a face like that. Crush asks if she's supposed to know who he is, and the man with dreadlocks leans forward over his pile of drugs, stating, I go by many names, but you can call me Ezekiel. Back in the day, I used to deal to your parents, but one day, they stole some product from me, which caused some problems for my uh, associates. I began hunting them down, but they always seemed to be one step ahead like they had a sixth sense. But it wasn't a sixth sense, it was that chain! It warned them. So I just watched from afar, waiting for the moment to get even. The plan was to steal you and sell you off in the dark web. But after you left that day, I found something better. I shot your parents and I took that chain! Crush shouts to Obless and Ezekiel stands up as Obless swirls around him asking, Oh, so that's its name! I've been calling it it! Did you get this thing from your old man Lobo? Crush yells, Lobo is not my father! And Ezekiel laughs, <laughs> of course he is. She charges and screaming, no! You killed my parents and now you're going to pay. Obless whips around, launching Crush into the ceiling and then flings back, knocking Jin out. Crush pulls herself out of the ceiling and lunges back at Ezekiel and he just continues laughing. <laughs> it! Go get her! Obless begins to wrap himself around Crush and she yells, your name is not it! You're Obless! And I'm Samara! We came to this planet together! She tries to hold Obless back, but the spike gets closer to her face. She tells Obless, You're my best friend, and I love you. Crush lets go, and Obless stops. The chain begins to playfully wrap itself around Crush, and she realizes, <laughs> There you are. Let's finish off this dirt bag. Obless shoots forward, wrapping around Ezekiel and squeezing, but Jin gets back up, stating that this will not bring back her family. Crush tells her no, but it will feel good, and she can't let this guy walk away. Jin lowers her hand, stating that she must forgive herself. Her father, David, once said that she can choose the kind of person that she wants to be. Lobo does not have to define her, not if she doesn't want him to. So a few seconds later, Ezekiel is released. Jin says that she is proud of the choice that was made. Crush wipes her face, stating, Just don't tell that roundhouse kid that I cried. He'll never let me live it down. Jin then looks at the chain, stating, So this is Obless. Where did you get its name? Crush says that she's not sure. She just always knew somehow. Jin takes Crush's hands, stating that this is exactly what she was talking about earlier. Humans are complicated and flawed, but goodness still exists within them if you let the right ones in. Crush asks, and give up being a stone cold badass? <laughs> give me a break. Jin asks her, what's next? Crush tells her, Lobo. Jin then asks, does she really think that he's her father? Crush tells her that she's not sure, but it's time she got answers of her origins. So Jin holds her hand out and tells Crush that it's okay. She won't be there alone. Now, I know that we titled this Crush Origins, and this is her origins of how she became Crush, but it's time to find out what her actual relationship is to Lobo. In the Teen Titans comic book, Lobo has just arrived, so we're not at that story yet. First, we have another story to tell you that comes out of these Teen Titans annuals, and then we have the death of Deathstroke, and then we have Lobo's return. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for the notifications to let yourself know when these videos go live, and don't forget, if you wanted early access to all of our videos, three days or more, they're all going early access over there, then go check out our Patreon where you can get access to those for only $2. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time.